manifestation of God. The way he spoke to Elijah is a beautiful lesson that we have to learn from the scripture. There was first a windstorm, wild wind which rent the mountains and broke the rock into pieces before Yahweh. But Yahweh was not in the wind. After the storm, an earthquake. But Yahweh was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But Yahweh was not in the fire. After the fire, a murmur of a gentle breeze. So, in your life, the whirlpools, earthquakes, fire that shakes your life, that distort your life, crush your life, break your life, smash your life, are signs of God's coming, God's manifestation, God's voice in your life. So fire, earthquake, wind will empty your life. And situations, problems, misunderstandings, sins, addictions will crush you and put you into zero level. And in that wilderness, after the fire, everything is done with the wind. Part of the whole structure will break. With the earthquake, the walls will crumble. And with the fire, everything will turn into dust and ashes. And that empty wilderness, he speaks to you. As in the wilderness, he spoke to Moses in a burning bush. He will speak to you. So when, when, when you face a lot of troubles, when you go through that difficult times, remember, after this, God is going to speak to you. And yeah, he prepares a mission after that terrible experience. That's where Elijah was given the mission to anoint Elisha and appoint the king after, after that kingdom. So that's exactly what he's going to do. If you are right now, if you are going through a terrible darkness, remember, it is always connected to his voice. He's going to speak to you. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. So that's where Jesus went up to the mountain to listen to the Father. When people wanted him to become the king, when people persuaded him to become the king, he wanted to be alone, all by himself with the Father. And in that silence, he heard the voice of the Father. And that gave him power to walk above the world waters. On the contrary, disciples, they were in a storm because Jesus was not there with them. And Jesus came right at the proper time to their lives. My dear friends, exactly, exactly, if you, if you are in a state where you can't bear the pain, pain is so much that you can't you can't hold on anymore. Remember, Jesus will come to you in that storm. And he says, it's I. Be courage. Don't lose hope. Have courage and trust in me. The Lord is saying to you also. And things won't be that clear always. For you to take the step. Peter is a greater greatest example in that way. He said, Lord, if it is you, command me, I would come on the waters. Beautiful, isn't it? It was not clear for him, but then if it is you, Lord, command, it's not me or my capacity, but by your command, by your word, I'm going to do this. Not clear, not clear at all. Yet, in that trust, he took the step. We are invited to take this very same step. Even things are not that clear. And also we can fail like Peter. The moment we lose the focus, Hamatia, 
that's sin. The moment you lose it and look at the waters and look at the wind and look at the storm, you will drown. You will be drowned. That's exactly what happens to us. Yet, Jesus will never leave you. He will stretch his arms arm out to hold you and get you out of the problem. So, when both of them climbed the boat, the whole sea got calmed. That is our life. That is our life. Our God is the God who speaks through storms, walk above the waters, and gives the mission even through fire, as he gave the mission to Moses in a burning bush. So don't worry. When you go through these steps, steps, steps of life, earthquake, storm, and fire, he will speak to you in a gentle breeze. That breeze is the breath of God. That breeze is the Holy Spirit. When creation, in creation, Holy Spirit moved like a wind, a gentle wind, to make a new creation. Exactly he would do the same in your life. In Ezekiel 37, yard of skeletons were given life with the breath of the Holy Spirit. So he will speak you through that connection of that wind. And thank, and thank the Lord, praise the Lord, even when you go through hardship and difficulties. Have a nice day. May God bless you, dear friends.